In mid-October 1922, a film crew arrived in the small town of West Orange, New Jersey, to spend some time with one of the most famous men in the world, the phenomenally prolific American inventor, Thomas Edison. Over the course of a few days, the cameras captured the great man at work, chatting with employees and conducting experiments in his lab, overseeing tests of packing materials in his factories, and catching up on the latest advances in the device for which he was best known. The things that Edison invented are so omnipresent in our society. They've touched the lives of millions and millions of people and totally changed them. We live in a world that Edison invented. Incandescent light, sound recording, motion pictures. For these and scores of other inventions, Edison had justly earned a claim as the inventor of the age. This is a, a replica of the first lamp. But no mere machine could account for his metamorphosis from inventor to icon. We think we are moving very, very fast today. Let me tell you, all those folks in Manhattan, as Thomas Edison is walking the streets, thought their bodies couldn't stand the shock of how fast they were moving. Poised at the starting line of America's rush into the modern world, Edison became its standard bearer. Hello, hello, hello. The impact of his native genius made infinitely more powerful by his timing his canny knack for self-promotion, and his compulsive need to win. Edison was very competitive. The more people who had tried to find the answer, the more tempting it was for him to take it on. He was maniacally focused on maintaining control. In the end, the intensity of Edison's drive proved both blessing and curse costing him the allegiance of a lifelong friend and control of the industry to which he'd given life, even as it guaranteed him a kind of immortality. There were other great inventors. Then there was Edison. He understood that inventing is not just having an idea. And so he made Edison a name to be reckoned with. In the late winter of 1876, the scattered residents of Menlo Park, New Jersey, eyed a curious new building just up the hill from the train station. It could easily have been mistaken for a school or a Quaker meeting house. In fact, it was a laboratory, a 5,000 square foot facility entirely dedicated to nurturing the ideas of one man, an up and coming entrepreneur by the name of Thomas Alva Edison. No private laboratory in the country was so well equipped. From the apothecary jars filled with all manner of chemicals and organic materials, to the scientific instruments and shop tools, Edison had everything he could possibly need to make the natural world bend to his will. He had this keen sense that he needed different kinds of resources in order to invent. And so Menlo Park becomes a, a kind of blank slate uh, on which to come up with this idea of invention that's uniquely his. Most successful inventors throughout history were largely people trying to accomplish a task. They had a day job, effectively, and invention was a way of furthering that. Edison decided that invention was his day job. At 29, Edison had the audacious ambition of a man who'd come from nothing and who had everything to prove. His was a classic American story, 
a spectacular rise from humble beginnings that soon would be told and retold and told again. Born in 1847 and raised in Port Huron, Michigan, near the edge of a small country, then on the verge of becoming great, Thomas Edison was all pluck and initiative from the start. By his own account, he was curious to the point of mischief. He once spent hours sitting on a neighbor's goose eggs in an effort to hatch them, and set fire to a barn just to see what it would do. Given just three months of formal schooling, he spent the carefree afternoons of boyhood reading his way through the library and obsessively conducting chemistry experiments in the cellar. Money was tight, so to finance his dabbling, he went to work at the age of 12, taking a job as a newsboy on the train that ran daily between Port Huron and Detroit. Along the way, in stations up and down the line, he became fascinated with the telegraph, which was beginning to knit the growing nation together as the rails were, only with lengths of copper wire. Is there a more leading edge thing going on in his world than telegraphy, moving real information at the speed of light with very sophisticated technologies to make it happen? He was amazed by it. He was that kind of kid. Edison's fascination sparked a quest for mastery. He taught himself Morse code and practiced sending and receiving telegraph messages for up to 18 hours a day before finally landing his first job as an operator in 1862, when he was just 15. By then, he'd become aware that he was losing his hearing, the racket of the world growing increasingly dim. But with telegraphy, he found that deafness gave him an edge. When in a telegraph office, he later recalled, I could hear only the instrument directly on the table at which I sat. And unlike the other operators, I was not bothered by other instruments. This condition made him feel like he could think more and he could concentrate more. He became very introspective. He often felt like he was alone even when there were other people around. For five years, Edison worked as a press operator deciphering the dots and dashes of the news reports as they came in over the wires. But the task, once mastered, ceased to inspire him. Given his druthers, he took the night shift, which gave him plenty of free time to read and experiment. Before long, he was tinkering with the telegraphic equipment. Edison didn't have a lot of formal schooling. Most of his technical education came from the practice of telegraphy. Um, the telegraph offices were schools of electricity. The nature of electricity itself was something he studied and learned how to think about how that system operated, how he might improve it. Edison slowly began to think of himself as an inventor. Edison starts at the core the mother load of the technological transformation in America. That's very, very important to the way that his mind and his confidence and his place at that machine kind of come together to launch the rest of his journey. 